It's time now for County Wide, a presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. You'll hear about the interesting issues and happenings that affect all our lives. Here's today's County Wide. Well, good day and welcome to the program. It is County Wide, and I'm Brad Miller, and we're so happy to welcome a familiar face, though it's been a little while since we have talked with Marilee Fowler and Marilee with the Matt Forrest Synonymous with that organization for so, so long. So welcome and good to see you again here in our studio. Thank you so much, Brad. Thank you for having me. We've chatted any number of times uh, over the years, uh, both uh, when we did the TV uh, side of uh, Countywide and now as we do it on the radio. Uh, but let's, uh, if we can, just I, I'd like to turn back the old time wheel a tiny bit because Matt Force is coming up on 20 years uh, in existence, your affiliation with this group almost as long. So let's just kind of talk maybe for the unfamiliar or those who uh, haven't uh, kind of thought about the origins of Matt Force and what the organization is. Uh, a little bit about where it's from, why it was formed, and uh, kind of the status uh, of its mission today. So can can we do that? Absolutely. You know, it's probably the number one question that I get is, what does Matt for stand for? Bingo. And exactly as you said, it started in 2005 to address the methamphetamine problem in Yavapai County. And there was a group of leaders, uh, Sheila Polk, the county attorney, the presiding judge, uh, Robert Brutonell, at the time that were really concerned because crime was on a steady increase. And we were seeing, you know, a lot of crime that was directly related to the methamphetamine problem. So instead of just talking about the problem, they wanted to talk about what are solutions. And so they formed Map Force, um, which was a group of people from all different sectors of the community that could get together and talk about solutions to the methamphetamine problem and not just talk about those problems, but also implement strategies and see what they could do to to reduce the meth problem. In my recollection, one of the biggest issues that was happening and maybe was substantial in giving birth to Matt Force uh, was uh, people making meth at home. Absolutely. And acquiring uh, some of the ingredients, uh, the illicit ingredients, pseudoephedrine and those kinds of things through pharmacies and some really significant, even historical changes came to Yavapai County through Matt Force's work, law enforcement, and just a desire to protect the community. Absolutely. In fact, one of our claims to fame is that um, it was at the time it was Chief Doug Bartosh, mm-hmm. the Cottonwood Chief of Police, who had the idea that putting a ephedrine behind the counter so that somebody couldn't just go into a CVS or Walgreens and purchase it, but they would have to actually do that through the pharmacist. And so they approached the, the council to, to do an ordinance to make that a rule in Cottonwood. Actually, the city attorney advised them not to do that, but they decided to put make that ordinance. And Cottonwood was the first municipality that had a ephedrine behind the counter. And as we know now, that became a state law, and it's, it's throughout the nation a ephedrine is behind the counter. But it was definitely an environmental strategy that helped to reduce the meth problem. And the manufacture of meth noticeably went down in Yavapai County. It did. It did, yes. Now, when we talk about ephedrine, we're talking common cold medicines that uh, we'll find probably in uh, just about any pantry uh, in America. Right. Sudafed is the main one, yes, but it's an ingredient in in cold medicines and allergy medicine, yes. And it's another uh, one of those things along, I mean, I've heard everything from kerosene to bleach to uh, so on and so forth, uh, folks uh, kind of concocting on their own in the basement or in the garage or in the RV, like on Breaking Bad, right. uh, meth. And we just, I, I mean, I don't hear about it so much any for, uh, anymore. Has, has it made that big of an impact? Yes, there hasn't been a meth lab in Yavapai County for, I would say, at least over 10 years. No um, kidding. So, yeah. So and now, you know, what? It, what's how meth is coming in now, it's manufactured in big super labs in Mexico and comes across the border. Okay. So it's not... It, not what we were seeing in 2005 when Matt Force was first formed. Well, and here we are, uh, you and I, as we we, we kind of shift up a tiny bit, uh, fentanyl has began, uh, become the rallying cry these days. It's the thing we seem to hear much more about, certainly what he did back then. Uh, as you and I talk here in the third week of August, I see another bust by YCSL Absolutely. of uh, a fentanyl uh, haul. Is that today's biggest problem? Absolutely. It's the leading cause of drug overdose deaths in our nation and in Yavapai County. So if we look at, you know, the number of of overdose deaths in our county, last year it was close to 60% of those deaths were from fentanyl. So very much a concern that we have right now. Tell me if you would share with our our listeners, you and I chatted a tiny bit before we opened the microphones, that fentanyl is um, even trickier because it's not just uh, in the same way a bottle of beer is a bottle of beer. 
uh, or even a marijuana joint is a marijuana joint. Fentanyl comes in other forms that you are, you're not aware of or may not be aware of. Right. I think the biggest thing that people need to realize is this is illicit counterfeit fentanyl. So this is not a prescription. Of course, there's fentanyl that you can, you know, if you go to the hospital and you have chronic pain or serious pain that a, a doctor can give to you. But this is illicit counterfeit fentanyl that is being manufactured by drug dealers. Again, the precursor comes from China. Uh, most of it's manufactured in, in Mexico. But again, as you mentioned, it comes in many different forms. Uh, there's a very common, a blue round uh, pill that looks like an oxycodone pill, but it also can be um, in, in, looks like a, a Xanax. It can look like an aspirin. I mean, now they're whatever coming they, up with... Whatever they want it absolutely. to look like. Absolutely. It comes in, it, it can be in a powder. So it, you know, it, it's really important that people realize that this is just simply a drug that is being sold in our in our state in our county that is for people to that have a use disorder to get high. So um, it, it, there's many many forms that it comes in. Um, another thing with fentanyl that's very important to mention: the DEA has done studies on you know this illicit counterfeit fentanyl, and they say that six of ten of the pills have a deadly dose of fentanyl. So when you think about again, this is this isn't done by a pharmaceutical company that's making sure that every pill has the right quantity. Six of ten have a deadly dose, and so for, particularly for somebody that's opioid naive that hasn't used this drug, they can take the one pill and die. Hence the logo: logo one pill can kill. Right. So we can uh, let me get a right perspective on that. Oxycodone typically would be if uh, I, I had to just go straight point to young people, but became a real problem with young people, uh, especially. There are folks who the prescription drug is almost a whole nother show. Right. Uh, people who get hooked through an initial legal contact and then it gets gets out gets out of hand. That's kind of a whole different thing. Um, but oxycodone pills, if someone gets them from someone's grandma's, uh, you know, bathroom, um, it's still an oxycodone pill, and it's still going to have most likely been prescribed to someone, and you kind of have a sense of what it is and what it's going to do. If you've taken several in the past, you have a faint idea of what the next one will do. Fentanyl erases all of that. Absolutely. Making and it much more deadly. Right. And that is what's made it so dangerous. You know, we were just <clears throat> devastated in 2020 when we had five teenagers, two 14-year-olds that died of fentanyl overdoses. Awful. And again, because they, you know, probably, you know, thought that this was a prescription pill that they were taking. Right. You know, still something that we don't want to see kids to do, but it was fentanyl and had a deadly dose and they did not wake up the next morning. So we are in a whole different situation with what's happening with fentanyl. Fentanyl, uh, let me back up a tiny bit. I thought fentanyl was um, the the, like the practical medical use was as a uh, um, an anesthesia. No, it's a painkiller. It's a painkiller. Okay, see, I, yeah. didn't, I didn't even know it, that. And um, they do use it anest- anesthesia. <laughs> I'm going to say that properly, but they do use it for that. But it's also uh, for pain. So there's a dual purpose for fentanyl. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah. All right. Well, it's the scourge these days, but there's so much work that Matt Force does uh, beyond the flavor of the month, if you will. And I want to explore that uh, a little bit uh, as we talk again with Marilee Fowler, our guest. Uh, Matt Force, a terrific organization. You can look at the website is I think mattforce.org. Yes. And uh, just find out what this program uh, is all about and uh, what its services are and how it might help you. We'll take a break. It's countywide. We'll be back right after this. Life changes, then it changes again. Predicting the unexpected in life is impossible. That's why it's called unexpected. So when it comes to financial goals, our philosophy is don't predict, prepare. Hi, I'm Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Matthias Sandoval. A job loss, change in health, or a loss of a loved one can have a big impact on your family's financial security. Let's work together to help make sure you're equipped for life's unexpected events. Call our office to schedule a face-to-face appointment. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Member SIPC. Verde Solaire, your hometown heating, air conditioning, and plumbing company in the Verde Valley. And your trusted North Central Arizona Goodman dealer. Goodman is a name you can trust with the revolutionary Comfort Bridge technology factory installed into select Goodman gas furnaces and air handlers to ensure the entire system operates at peak energy efficient performance. Verde Solar offers free in home estimates, locally owned and operated since 1983. Visit them at VerdeSolar.com. Better, cleaner, faster. Hi, this is Lewis Rice with Rice Accounting Jackson Hewitt Tax Service with a very sincere thank you for your continued business over the last 20 years. 
All of us at Jackson Hill Tax Service are very honored for the many community awards we've been given over the years. As always, we are open year-round, providing services for taxes, payroll, and bookkeeping. Jackson Hill Tax Service, located throughout northern Arizona, can help you with all your tax and accounting needs. For our nearest location, call 800-234-1040. Let's talk. That's the message from John Randall Murdoch, your local Farm Bureau agent providing a personal touch when making insurance and financial decisions. John will simplify your insurance needs while offering competitive pricing. Let's talk auto, home, life, and farm. Call John at Farm Bureau today at 928-649-8686. Your Cottonwood Farm Bureau property and casualty insurance company. At Farm Bureau, they insure more than just farms. We welcome you back to uh, the program. I'm Brad Miller, and with me today, Matt Forrest, the director, Merrily Fowler, and uh, we appreciate you taking time and coming in and, and, and chatting with us. There's a lot to uh, cover. Um, we we oftentimes uh, think of about Matt Forrest, or I do, think about Matt Forrest as kind of being focused with youth. Now, people can become addicted or uh, abuse drugs, narcotics, whether they're legally intended or not, uh, at, at any age, obviously. Uh, the work early on with the meth and whatnot certainly was be, was because young people were were especially affected uh, by that. Is that still true today? It is a hundred percent true. Our number one focus is youth prevention, and so we're never going to make a decision that would harm that that goal that we have. And so you know, and we have some things to celebrate with youth prevention um, in Yavapai County and in our state because. If we look at, there's a survey that's done in the schools with 8th, 10th, and 12th grade students, and it's called the Arizona Youth Survey that's done by the Arizona Criminal Justice Commission every even year. And we're very grateful that Yavapai County Schools allow that survey to take place. But that's where we gather information like, such as what drugs are kids using, why they use, why they choose not to use, just a host of different information. But the good news is if we look at that survey throughout the history of Map Force, so even going back to 2004, you know, through 2022, alcohol is has been predominantly the number one drug that youth use. And I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. That's probably true going back 40 years, 50 I, absolutely. years. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. I think, you know, throughout history, that would be the case. But if we look at, and we look at 30-day use, so not lifetime use, you know, somebody might say, well, my grandfather gave me a drink of their beer, which of course right. we don't want them to do that. But but that we're not, we're counting where kids regularly would use the substance. Okay. So it's an indication of 30-day use. So if we go back to, to uh, 2020, excuse me, 2004, it was about 35% of the youth in Yavapai County that said that they regularly used alcohol. Fast forward to 2022, it's just over 18%. That's so significant. It, it is. Almost so that, half. Yes. So a very significant That's reduction. Great. And we've seen That's that with great. other substances too. You mentioned prescription drugs. That was up about 15% in 2010. That's down to a, less than 3% of kids that say that they have any use of prescription drugs. So we're very thankful for that misuse of prescription drugs, right. I should say. The other thing that I want to celebrate, because a lot of times, even when we're in the schools, kids, and I think parents think that all kids use drugs. That's that's not the case. <laughs> you know, right. a significant majority make the choice not to. And so we we came up with a campaign a few years ago called Stand With Me, Be Drug Free, you know, celebrating, join the majority. A significant percentage of kids do not abuse and use drugs in our county. So right. that's something we really want to celebrate. You think about that and, you know, just how as we go generationally, every decade or so, every generation certainly is uh, is going to be different, a totally different kind of thing. When I was uh, um, uh, when I was young, that sounds awful to say, every movie that came out into the cinemas was about making it, getting some, all of those kinds of things. That was how, I mean, that's just how it was. Kids in abstinence these days, this is way off the mat for subject, <laughs> but it just, I use it to kind of illustrate how, one generation of young people is not like any other generation of young people. They're all going to make their own decisions. And it's so encouraging to hear that when it comes to the work of Matt Force, clearly there's been a big impact and a big effect. Uh, cutting down uh, the, 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 the drinking by half uh, in a decade or 15 years is extraordinary. Absolutely. And I don't know that any of us would have expected that. Absolutely. And I say all the time, you know, our youth are smart. And I think yes, they are. And, you know, even if we go back to the fentanyl problem, when I mentioned in 2020 with having young people die, you know, we that was, you know, something that we wanted to be right away in the schools talking about fentanyl also. And, and you know, in the years of 2021, 2022, we had no teenagers that died of an overdose because once they realize the danger of putting that one pill in their mouth, they're going to make the choice most of the time not right. to do that. And it's the same with, you know, the main substances that they are abusing. So alcohol, 
you know, vaping has been a big concern in the last few years. Uh, that's definitely been a generational change with, you know, cigarette smoking has gone way down, but in place, they think that vaping is now a safe thing to do. And so working very hard just to educate them on the true risks and harms and talking about how it affects their future. And I do believe, again, that kids are going to make good choices if they're just given the information to make those choices. Right, right, right. Now, when you're talking vaping, you're not talking marijuana, you're talking tobacco. Well, both, both. Okay. So, you know, the vaping devices, you can either put, you know, nicotine or uh, cannabis marijuana in them. And okay. so that's one of the things that we hear a lot about in the schools. And again, we have a whole curriculum just on the risks of vaping. It's simply not true that people think that it's a safer thing to do. They're still putting that substance in their lungs and, you know, they're, they're, they're finding more and more research of the harms. And again, we just want to educate kids, you know, of the truth. It's an addictive drug. That's the other thing, you mm-hmm. know, parents a lot of times are saying, I can't get my child to quit vaping. Well, you know, we have to explain to them they're addicted to that substance that they're vaping. And, and there's a whole process that you're going to have to go through to help them, you know, to get to get well from that addiction. So you, you mentioned that addiction. I'm thinking okay, you're talking tobacco or marijuana. And uh, there would be plenty that would say, well, tobacco very much is addictive. Marijuana, not so much. Marijuana psychologically can be much more addictive. Yes. Is that is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Um, what they say, in, and I, going back, Brad, to when we talk about youth prevention, that's the other thing that we know is that when kids start using a substance earlier, they are much more likely to develop that addiction or use disorder. And so that's one of the reasons that we want them, you know, number one, it's I think it, to be healthy, it's a good choice never to start using those right. drugs, but particularly with adolescent brain. Um, You know, if you talk to treatment facilities, it's like nine of 10 people that are in treatment started as a teenager. You know, so that's that's, I think, something that we really need to take a good hard look at. And your question with marijuana, um, you know, kids are they're much more at risk to become addicted to marijuana if they start young. I mean, that's statistically proven. Now, again, is it as addictive? I don't think it's as addictive as nicotine, Mm. um, you know, but it is an addictive drug that people will psychologically and also will have some physical addictions to. So so it's it's a fact. (laughs) Well, you think about how peer pressure uh, kind of changes, you know, it might peak even in junior high school through high school, once you kind of get some of those milestones, high school graduation, 18, 19 years of age, uh, and go on, there's still peer pressure. There is throughout our lives, but it definitely seems to change. And as we mature, we understand it a little bit better. And it seems like once you can get out of the high school range, uh, some of those pressures from your peers, at least, will start to diminish, if, especially if you've kind of swum in a, a clear stream up to that point. A- absolutely. Yeah. And again, I think that's ex- why we, we have, you know, a number one goal is to just educate these kids and parents also, and so that they can make good choices in their teen years in middle school and high school. Some of the numbers I can't help but notice uh, uh, kind of tie into the COVID period. Did Matt Force, uh, through study and statistics, determine did COVID cause any spikes or any real problems? We were all staying home. Right. Were we drinking and smoking? One statistic that really um, came to the forefront during COVID is I I mentioned that that survey that the the schools will allow the kids to take also ask the kids that say that they are regular users of the users of these substances why they're using. And I think, you know, the number one reason that's not a surprise to have fun or to get high. But following that is to deal with stress. That's that's a predominant reason why people use or to not feel sad. And of course, as you know, you've reported on and has been so true, there's been this increase in in kids struggling with their mental wellness. Right. And I think that COVID had a, a huge impact on that. Um, and so again, what we're trying to teach kids is it's not going to help you to feel better. It might be a short-term high, but but the long-term effects of you know any type of drug, it, it leads to further depression and anxiety down the road. And so um, that's, that is definitely something that we saw a spike in with related to COVID. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I think, I think the impacts of COVID, you know, there's the sniffly uh, uh, coughing and all of those kinds of the physical illness and the ailments killed a million and a half people in the country. That was awful. Uh, it's not done, but I do believe, and I think a lot of people at this point would agree with all of the, a lot of the numbers and the, the opinions that coming in of the bigger socioeconomic impact of COVID has not even begun to be felt yet. Absolutely. And some of the things you've described and almost everybody right. uh, would describe it similarly. Um, talk to me a little bit about a program. I don't know if this was developed by Matt Forrest, but I associate the two very closely, and that's Dump the Drugs. Yes. 
So dump the drugs, actually, we got to give credit to Graham County. So the Graham County Substance Abuse Coalition, one of their members had the idea, you know, it was at the height of the prescription drug problem around 2008, that they thought that they would host an event where people could bring their unnecessary or outdated prescription medications to be properly disposed of. And so we actually, it was actually uh, somebody associated with Yavapai Broadcasting that had the idea, had seen that and said, let's do that, that in Yavapai County. But where Matt Force, we went a little bit further, and it was at the time Chief Jody Fanning, who was the Cottonwood Chief of Police, the very first dump the drugs that we did, we collected over 400 pounds in Cottonwood of prescription medication. We were just yeah. floored by the response and people saying, I didn't know what to do with this. And so Chief Fanning actually said, you know what, I think that we should start taking these medications at our police department so that people could drop them off during business hours. And so now throughout the nation, there are drop boxes in Yavapai County. We have 15 drop boxes because it's it's legal for police departments to take these medications back since there's controlled substances right. and then properly dispose of those. So there's the two benefits. Number one, you know, to get these medications out of the hands of somebody that might, you know, be abusing them, youth um, right. that might want to experiment with getting high. And then also for environmental reasons, keeping it out of our water. So, yeah, yeah. so um, we keep a log. We've been keeping this log since 2008. And we're getting close to the 40,000 pound mark of prescription medications that our law enforcement agencies have collected and properly disposed that of. That is extraordinary. It, it is. That's, it's pretty crazy. That, that is a success. Yeah. One of many for Matt Forrest. All right. We need to take a short break. I would tell you that we are going to do a second part uh, with Merrily. We've kind of covered here in our, our first show of two um, a lot of history where Matt Force has come from. And I want to kind of focus on what's happening today and uh, what is uh, to come. There's some interesting new programs that Marilee Fowler will tell us about on our next uh, segment next time we meet on Countywide. For now, we're going to stop. We'll come back. We'll wrap up today's show, give that website some other information real quick, and then another program with Marilee Fowler, Matt Force. It's Countywide, and we're back right after this. Life changes, then it changes again. Predicting the unexpected in life is impossible. That's why it's called unexpected. So when it comes to financial goals, our philosophy is don't predict, prepare. Hi, I'm Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Matthias Sandoval. A job loss, change in health, or a loss of a loved one can have a big impact on your family's financial security. Let's work together to help make sure you're equipped for life's unexpected events. Call our office to schedule a face-to-face appointment. Edward Jones, Making Sense of Investing, member SIPC. Verde Solaire, your hometown heating, air conditioning, and plumbing company in the Verde Valley. And your trusted North Central Arizona Goodman dealer. Goodman is a name you can trust with the revolutionary Comfort Bridge technology factory installed into select Goodman gas furnaces and air handlers to ensure the entire system operates at peak energy efficient performance. Verde Solar offers free in home estimates, locally owned and operated since 1983. Visit them at VerdeSolar.com. Better, cleaner, faster. Hi, this is Lewis Rice with Rice Accounting Jackson Hewitt Tax Service with a very sincere thank you for your continued business over the last 20 years. All of us at Jackson Hewitt Tax Service are very honored for the many community awards we've been given over the years. As always, we are open year-round providing services for taxes, payroll, and bookkeeping. Jackson Hewitt Tax Service, located throughout Northern Arizona, can help you with all your tax and accounting needs. For our nearest location, call 800-234-1040. Let's talk. That's the message from John Randall Murdoch, your local Farm Bureau agent providing a personal touch when making insurance and financial decisions. John will simplify your insurance needs while offering competitive pricing. Let's talk auto, home, life, and farm. Call Jana at Farm Bureau today at 928-649-8686. Your Cottonwood Farm Bureau property and casualty insurance company. At Farm Bureau, they insure more than just farms. We welcome you back. Our final segment in uh, the first of two uh, programs in a row with Marilee Fowler, Executive Director, Matt Force, and uh, for a long time now. How long? You, I've been Matt Force been here 19 years. Yeah, I've been here for over 17 years. Okay, so, so you've been yeah. doing it pretty much yeah. since uh, the get-go, yeah. and certainly under your leadership, uh, Matt Force has begun something known not just in our community, and we're lucky to have it in Yavapai County in northern Arizona, uh, but l- literally across the nation, certainly uh, through, uh, throughout the uh, uh, the state of Arizona and bordering states, but all over the country. Things have come out of Matt Force that have been adopted successfully by law enforcement and people who care across the country. If someone has a question, uh, perhaps, I don't know if you need volunteers or those kinds of things, but how do they get a hold of you? 
Uh, well, we have a website that they can learn more information, and that's mattforce.org, M-A-T-F-O-R-C-E. And they could also call our office. It's the, Our number is 928-708-0100. Very good. All right. Mary Lee Fowler, it's the first of a two-parter. We'll continue to talk. I want to talk a little bit when we come back about a number of things, some interesting programs that have sprung up uh, from Matt Force. We'll do that for sure. I do want to visit a little bit on the op- opioid crisis. We mentioned it here in our first segment. I want to dump, uh, jump into that a tiny bit more, and we'll do that with our guests, Marilee Fowler and uh, Matt Forrest. It's countywide, and we'll see you next time. This has been Countywide. Listen in each Tuesday and Thursday at this time. If you have a topic or guest idea that you'd like to suggest, email us, news at myradioplace.com.